Okay, that looks a little sinister. How's it going, everybody? My name is Al, and welcome to the Nerd Room. Today, we're playing some more Octopath Traveler. So, in the last episode, we saved a group of kids from the jaws of a giant wolf. And now, we're heading back to Quarry Crest in order to continue Cyrus's story and figure out where that book he was looking for might be. But before we begin, guys, if you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to stay notified. Alright, well, since we've been to Quarry Crest already, we can... Oh. Hmm. Hold on, actually, before we head out. <laughs> Quick stop at the inn just to recuperate. And we're good. Okay, that's much better. Now, as I was saying, since we have been there before, we can get there in the blink of an eye with the wonders of fast travel. That's right, I had business here. Okay. Cyrus, Chapter 2. Hoping to solve the mysteries behind a certain ancient tome, you head to Quarry Crest. Here, you seek out Odette, a former colleague who may be able to shed some light on the matter. All right. Let's do this thing. All righty, Cyrus, who are we looking for? The story so far. Cyrus left the Academy behind in search of the lost tome. From the far reaches of hell, its disappearance was a riddle wrapped in a mystery. A riddle that piqued his scholarly curiosity. Oh boy, that word, that word is surprisingly difficult, not gonna lie. <laughs> Even suffering the indignity of losing his post was a small price to pay for the opportunity of solving this fascinating puzzle. And so did Cyrus come to Quarry Crest to call upon an old colleague who just might have the answers he seeks. Alright, so where is this old colleague? So this is Quarry Crest. It's hard to believe it's been ten whole years since Odette left the Academy. And her house was... Ah, that's right. She left directions in her letter. I should take another look. You have all the makings of a great scholar, Cyrus. But allow me to offer you a word of warning. For all your intellect, you have always been clumsy in matters of the heart. Oh, is this an old love interest of his? <laughs> I know that your research is more important to you than anything, but you would do well to give some thought to how you treat the fairer sex. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, I think they've had a relationship in the past. You are more handsome than you give yourself credit for. If you are not careful, you might find your words and actions misconstrued by those around you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have known better than to read that again. The first time I read it, I nearly fell over laughing. Now it seems almost prophetic. To think I'd be banished from the Academy because of a trumped-up scandal like that. I can just see Odette laughing at me the moment I mention it. But there's no point worrying. I have to face her sooner or later, after all. I try to keep myself presentable, this is true. But is my face truly so easy on the eyes? Is he trying to, like, deduce it? Like, hmm, am I truly sexy? <laughs> oh, woe is me, doomed to never realize the full depths of my good looks and charisma. <laughs> oh, boy, and he's humble too, ladies. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I guess he is kind of a catch. <laughs> Professor, may I ask what that letter was about? It seemed most engrossing. Oh, that? It was a message warning me about women. Huh? Oh, I don't mean in a bad way. What it actually said was that I should be careful how I act toward women, lest I give cause for misunderstandings. Well, intelligence such as yours can be very attractive. Please, my dear. A word such as attractive must be kept in reserve for those of great beauty, such as yourself. Um. <laughs> hmm? I think maybe that's the kind of thing the letter writer was talking about. You think so? But I was merely speaking my mind. Am I not allowed to tell a beautiful woman that she is just that? Well, sometimes you can, but maybe in your case you shouldn't. Tisk. I am finding this most difficult to understand. Okay, then. Now, anyway, where are we going to find Odette? I don't think there's any more houses past this point. 
short of uh, Orlick's mansion. Uh, oh, there's this house. Is she in here? Oh, okay. I believe she is. <laughs> Anyhow, here we are. All right. In we go, Cyrus. Yes, yes, I'll be right there. It's <laughs> been some time, Odette. No. <laughs> oh. That's not exactly the uh, <laughs> the response I was expecting. Hello, and she goes back inside. <laughs> Dag nabbit. <laughs> oh, hello again. You're still here. I guess I'm not suffering from fatigue-induced hallucinations after all. Okay. It's me, Odette, in the flesh. Good to see you as hale and hearty as ever. And you're as insufferable as ever, no doubt. What are you waiting for? Come in already. All right. Um, hurtful, but thank you. I guess I'll accept the invitation to come inside. If I do. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, looks like Cyrus's uh, prediction was right on the money. How did I know that would be your reaction? We were practically joined at the hip back in the day. Just watching you go about was fun in and of itself. I always had a hunch you'd end up in trouble with the ladies, but to think it would happen with the princess of all people. Somehow, you've managed to exceed even my wildest expectations. By expelling me, they hope to protect Her Highness's good name. Needless to say, there's no truth in any of this. Oh, of course, of course. I'm sure it's all as you say. Her Highness and this Teresa are just your pupils. They have no romantic interest in you in the slightest. You're something else, Cyrus. But it's a relief to find your powers of observation are as keen as ever. Well, did you come all this way just to entertain me? If so, congratulations on a job well done. Save your congratulations for another time. I've come in search of a certain tome. Are you perchance familiar with From the Far Reaches of Hell? Uh -huh. A cheery title if I've ever heard one. I can tell you that it's a compendium of ancient rites and rituals, not that I've read it myself, of course. I know that much. I was hoping you could tell me more. Not much more. It touches upon necromancy, I believe. Necromancy? Necromancy. That said, as to what extent, I know little. Is that so? I was sure that if anyone could enlighten me, it would be you. Is that supposed to be flattery? All right, just give me some time. As soon as I tackle the little pickle I'm dealing with at the moment, I'll do some investigating. Oh-ho! A pickle, you say? Consider my interest piqued. I always took you for the type who chewed up and spit out your problems before pickles they could become. Again, I find your flattery lacking. Anyhow, since you're here, perhaps I can put you to use. As it happens, a number of people have gone missing of late. Oh. Okay, then. Under suspicious circumstances, I presume? Just so. Many quite literally seem to have been spirited away. One soul went to the neighborhood provisioner to buy some foodstuffs and never returned. Another turned a street corner only to vanish entirely, leaving his friend who was strolling with him in disbelief. All told, ten men and women have gone missing in such a fashion in the past half year. How curious indeed. Don't look so disappointed, you nut job. Okay, come on. So how about it? Do you have any ideas? It would be imprudent to jump to conclusions without conducting an investigate. Great, thanks. I knew I could count on you. Okay. I'll look into that tome while you're away. A fair trade, I'd say. Though I dare say that having the opportunity to solve this peculiar puzzle is a reward in itself. It figures. Well, happy investigating. First, I should ask Odette where precisely the kidnappings have occurred. Now then, Odette, do you have any information for me? Let's 
see now. Come to think of it, the three people who went missing were all last seen near the inn. It could well be a coincidence. Okay, the inn. Most intriguing. All right, well, let's go check out the inn then and see what people know. I believe it's over here, yes? Yes. Let's see now. Seen it happen both in the dead of night and broad daylight. Someone's walking by the inn, they turned the corner up ahead, and when I followed, they were gone. Vanished into thin air. Most intriguing. And how about you, sir? Do you know anything? Let's see now. A system of underground canals runs all throughout this town. I don't think anyone has ventured down there in quite some time, though. Okay, well, that kind of blows the lid off the whole mystery, doesn't it? <laughs> Most intriguing. And with that, I do believe I have all the knowledge I need to crack the case. Now, where did the disappearances occur? Near the inn. Every victim was in the general vicinity of the inn when they disappeared. We can say with absolute certainty that they did not vanish into thin air, or some such nonsense. When did the disappearances occur? At all hours. As such, it stands to reason that they were kidnapped, and that the kidnapper made use of a hidden path or passage to evade the public eye. What route did the kidnapper employ so as not to draw attention? The sewers. Really, the skies are an option. <laughs> oh boy, the sewers. The entrance to the sewers would seem to make for an ideal escape route. Yes, doubtless the culprit stole underground to spirit his victims away. So we got a kidnapper running through the sewers. Got it. I do believe I should have a look down there for myself. All right, well, let's get a move on. So let me see, right over here. The sewers. All right, let's go. Ooh. Aha. Here we are. I will say, for sewers, they don't look half bad. From the looks of it, these aqueducts predate the founding of the village itself. There's a good chance many of the villagers are unaware of their existence. This calls for a thorough investigation. But I must be wary. For all I know, the culprit could be lurking in the shadows as I speak. I will proceed with caution. After all, it simply wouldn't do if I became our villain's latest victim. Okay, well, luckily you have a warrior and a hunter with you at the moment, so I think you'll be golden. Anyway, let's get a move on and see what we can find. Hmm. Is there a Yeah, I knew there would be some over here. Now, let's see. Is this the correct way forward, or... Is this just a path to find some secrets? Oh, okay. Well, either way, there's some baddies here. So what are they weak to, Cyrus? Lightning and wind. Okay, well, we can't do anything with the wind weakness at the moment, but we can do something about that lightning weakness. There we go. Okay, skeletons are vulnerable to swords, and neither are the wisps. Ah, there we go. Nice. So the bones are vulnerable to stabs. Now let's use Analyze to figure out these Wisps' other weakness. Light damage. Okay, perfect. Oh. Okay, dang. Those Wisps do a decent amount of damage. Let's get that out of here. Okay, nice. And the Skeletons are weak to light damage as well. Oh. Oh, dang it. I forgot to get better armor for Hornet. Let me see. Can I capture these guys? Oh, nope. 5% chance of success. I don't think I'm going to get them. <laughs> Alright, so the marionette bones, I imagine, aren't going to do much damage, at least compared to the wisps. So I think I'll focus on them first. So use Thunderbird on this one, open him up, and then Ulbrich can do some serious damage to him. Oh boy. Okay, never mind. The skeletons do some decent damage as well. Ow. So yeah, Ophelia, heal us up, please. Thank you. Let's see, a cross strike should have enough oomph to kill this thing. Never mind, okay. All right, well, let's hit him with a lightning blast then. That should kill him, right? There we go, much better. 
All right, let's bump up the cross strike a little bit and then use it to take down the wisp. That's better, okay. Now we just have the skelly men to deal with, owie. All right, let's see here. Let's just use a lightning bolt here. That should at least kill one of them. Yep, there we go. There we go, okay. That was surprisingly difficult. Oh, there we go, Cyrus leveled up. Perfect. Now I don't have to waste any of my items getting his SP back. So yeah, we're dealing with some decently strong enemies in this area. Oh nice, a healing great bunch. That'll come in real handy. Oh, okay. Looks like I found the end of the tunnel already. Oh yeah, that's definitely the entrance of the boss lair. Alright, so what can we expect in there? Oh boy. Okay, that looks a little sinister. Well, here goes nothing. Onward! Oh, Nelly. I do say, to think there were such elaborate structures under the surface. Oh, you all right, dude? You still alive? He's dead. Oh, okay. But what in the heavens is this? It's as if the blood was drained from his body. And what is this atop these strange patterns? Okay, so this is a bloodletting machine? That's a little gruesome. Are you sure it's wise to stand in the middle of that, Cyrus? Clearly some baleful sorcery has been practiced here. These gemstones. Why, if my hypothesis is correct, they must be composed of crystallized human blood. Yeesh. Okay, well, for what purpose? And yet it is as if a myriad hues of red are mixed together. Yeah. Could it be that each gem contains the blood of multiple victims? Good gods, what horrors have been wrought here? How many innocents have been victimized by this blood-sucking sorcerer? At least now we know the motives behind the kidnappings. The villain we are dealing with is no common criminal. No, I am loath to even call him a human being. Sucking the life from the men and women of this poor town, only to cast them away. This is a veritable demon who walks among us. One thing is clear, this monster must be stopped before he can commit any more vile deeds. As an academic, I must confess that the history of the dark arts intrigues me. But to put them into practice, this is truly beyond the pale. <gasps> What's this? Oh, okay, I think those people might still be alive. The young lady in this cell, she still lives. I must free her, lest she suffer the same fate as the others. Okay. Any idea how to do that? Is there a key or something? I guess so. Okay. And who might you be? Uh-oh. Hello? Just a scholar of no particular repute. I was passing through and could not help but notice these odd gemstones. Are they perhaps your work? And these strange glyphs, are they not runes of High Hornbergian? Are they now? The tomes of ancient Hornberg were lost long ago. No ordinary scholar would be privy to this knowledge. But how could any self-respecting academic perform such horrors? Ho oh, ho! Seems you're more of a scholar than you give yourself credit for. Okay. Uh-oh. They still live, yes? If you know what's best for you, you'll free them at once. Well, since you asked so nicely... No. I think not. Eh, worth a shot. A shame. If only you hadn't come poking around in my secrets. I wouldn't have minded picking your brain. You don't mean that literally, do you? Now I'll have to settle for sucking your blood! Okay, are you a vampire? Oh boy. I cannot oh, fight. Nelly. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. 
All right, let's see. You're vulnerable to bows? You are not. How about swords? There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, dang it. Okay, so I need to kill the skeletons first. I guess first things first, what are these things weak to? Light damage. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Okay, he doesn't do much more damage than the basic enemies of this place. I think his main threat will be the fact that he can keep summoning these skeletons. Or at least I assume he can keep summoning them. Let's see... You guys vulnerable to swords? Okay, the skeletons are nuts. Alright, what else are they weak to? Staffs, okay. Alright, let's see. You guys vulnerable to axes? Yes! Okay, there we go. Nice going, Haunted. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon on that whole comment about him not being as strong as the enemies here. Hmm. That's a pretty beefy move. So, and we'll have... Cyrus. Oh, boy. Oh boy, I've only got four of them. That is not gonna last me, I don't think. Oh dear. There we go. And now, heal us up, Ophelia. Oh jeez, I have to try and avoid these guys getting killed as much as possible. Ow. Granted, yes, that should be a normal objective, I think, but I don't have very many olives of life to work with, so... Ooh, boy. I think this is gonna be a close one. Alright, one more weakness. Is it something I can use? Fire. Okay, Cyrus can use that. Erg. Stop with the terror claw. Oh, dang nabbit. Oh, this is gonna be rough. <laughs> All right, there, we're no, nobody's really in a desperate need for healing at the moment, so I'll use Luminescence. Then I'll have Haunted attack this guy with just a basic axe attack. Second serving, perfect. Then I will incite the enemies. So they attack Ulrich, just to keep the pressure off of the rest of the party. And yeah, if I use Luminescence again, that'll take down both the skeletons. Beautiful. And then these guys can hit him with some real damage. All right, take some of this. There we go. 400 damage to both. Okay, those skeletons have got to be close to dead now, right? Oh, boy. Well, that was quite the move. Jeez. Oh, did give Ulbrich a, give Ulbrich a healing grape there. There we go. And then just a light heal wounds. To keep Hana and Cyrus alive. All right, here they come again. Oh, nice job. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, they're still. A oh no, this move. Shit. <laughs> that is not gonna help matters any. Okay. Okay, Ophelia. Okay, there we go. We're good. And I think if I use Take Aim, I'll be able to counteract the effects of the blindness. Never miss it. Hopefully, at least. Fingers crossed. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. Dagnabbit. All right, let me see here. Let's cross strike this one. Try and kill it. Never mind, it missed. So much for the accuracy boost. Well, this I don't think will miss, because it's a giant fireball. There we go. And let's bump a level slash and hope it kills these things. Aw, oh, dang it, they're still alive. And here comes the big guy. Oh, and he just killed Hanit. Oh, dang it. Oh man, and Cyrus doesn't have enough for Firestorm. All right, well, I'll just have him use Fireball. That should hopefully at least kill one. Aw, oh, dang it. Oh, boy. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Oh, dang it. Cyrus just went down. Oh, crap. Oh, we are so dead. <laughs> there is no way we're pulling this fight off. Oh. Okay. Okay, they're still alive. Oh, boy. Oh, crap. And there goes Ophelia. 
Oh boy. Okay. Failed. <laughs> Dag nabbit. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back in town, go to the tavern, and I'm going to pick up Alfin. Because that way we'll have two sources of healing, an axe user so he can take down the skeleton's defenses, and we'll have a way to counteract those status effects. So let's do this. Well met, traveler. What can I do ye for? Well, I'm here to pick up a party member. Alright, so swap out Alfin and Hornet. I'll make another stop at the inn just to heal up again. And then we'll be on our way back into the fray. And hopefully things will go a little better. I might as well quickly check. Do I have anything in my inventory to help with defense against uh, dark magic? Lightning damage, wind damage, fire damage. Doesn't look like it, unfortunately. All right, well, might as well equip uh, Alfin with Omar's axe here. So he has a bit more oomph in combat. And you know what? I just thought of something. I haven't changed their weapons since I recruited them. Maybe I should quickly check if there's some better, uh, some better staffs in the weapon shop here. Let me see, I could go for the Flail or the Staff of Wonders. All right, so the Staff of Wonders seems to be more suited for uh, using magic because it increases elemental attack damage and can decrease the target's elemental attack damage, which might be useful against a sorcerer. And the flail is just a flail. Like, it's it's meant to, like, <laughs> it's meant to whack people. I'll buy the Staff of Wonders for Cyrus, and then I think I'll give the flail to Ophelia. That way, she can just focus on using her SP to heal, because uh, I'll basically only be using her, like, her light magic to break those skeleton's defenses. And then I can just use her with the flail to do some decent damage. I hope, anyway. There we go. I think we're ready. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, so the sorcerer's vulnerable to axes as well. I can use that. Alright, so I imagine his first move is going to be to summon those skeletons. So I'll just, okay. So I'll just study him quickly, yep. Figure out what else he's weak to and his HP, which stood at 26,000, which comparatively isn't bad. I just need to get through his bony defenses and then we're golden. So I'll just take down these skeletons one at a time. Ow. Just like that. Here comes Gideon. Erg. Okay, there we go. Ophelia's doing triple-digit damage now. I can live with that. Let's see if these dancing bones can survive this. Okay, so the answer is yes, but he probably is hurting real bad right now. Oh, that moves back. Okay. Oh, that's not great. Luckily, we have Alfin here to get rid of status effects, so we should be a little better this time. I got just what you need. Perfect. And now I know these things are vulnerable to fire damage. So let's boost Cyrus and hit him with a firestorm. There we go. We killed one of them. We're already doing better than our last attempt. Ow. Okay. Uh, Alfin, maybe you should rehabilitate Cyrus there because he's not looking great. He's blind and horrified. So let's just get rid of that for him. There we go. And that should open up Gideon's defenses. Oh yeah. Oh jeez. Okay, Cyrus is still alive. He's not looking great, but he's still alive. Bring about a miracle of healing. There we go. Back in business. Alright. And I think it'd be more beneficial to rehabilitate Ulbrich, because Cyrus's spells I don't think would be too affected by the blind status effects, but Ulrich swinging his sword would be, so there we go. Okay, if I remember correctly, Gideon's second weakness was daggers, which none of us can use, but I believe his other weakness was light damage. Bam! All right, so if I use Alfin to attack him once, brings him down to three, Ulrich brings him down to two, 
Uh, Cyrus, I think I... What will Cyrus do? No one needs healing at the moment. Everyone's got decent SP. Yeah, I guess I'll just have him analyze Gideon, just to see where his health's at right now. 23,000. Okay, we brought him down by 3,000 HP. Oh, boy. Okay, hang in there, Ophelia. Jeez. There we go. He's down to one. Then Ulbrick this turn. We'll attack him one more time. Then, on the next turn, he'll have three boost points and we can use Brand's Thunder. And I'll give a healing grape to Ophelia, just like so. And then we'll try and do as much damage to this douche as possible. Let me see, do I have any... Ooh. I could poison him. That would be very useful, I think. Yeah, let's do that. We'll boost it, and then poison Gideon. Perfect. Now that'll be doing constant damage. Right. And won. now it's Ulbrich's turn. Heart. Nice. Okay, let me see. Is there anything else we can do to this guy? Amputation. How much damage would that attack do? Let's see. 500. Okay, that's not bad. And then I think I'll have Cyrus do a quick firestorm just to do a shit ton of damage to him. There we go. Alright. Now what's your next move, Gideon? Executioner. Okay, got it. Okay, here comes Gideon again. Oh, that one. Okay. Okay. We're alright. We're alright. Oh, boy. Alright, so I think I'll give an energizing pomegranate to Ulbrick. Then I'll have him just attack Gideon, I think. Just like that. And Ophelia break his defenses with Holy Light. Booyah. And then I'll have Alphen just do a fully boosted attack. Oh dang it, Ulbrick doesn't have enough SP. Oh shit. Alright, well... Hmm... All right, well, I might as well take this opportunity to boost Ulbrich's attack power, I guess. There we go, Ulbrich. Psych yourself up. Then we'll give an Inspiriting Plum to Ulbrich. Get his SP back up. Uh, use Ophelia to heal us. Okay, we're pretty much back to full. Then let's just do an amputation against this guy. There we go. Oh, nice, we got him in the yellow zone. Okay. That means he must be at fairly low health at the moment. Let's see. 12,000. Heck yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. Just hang in there a little longer, guys. We got this one in the bag, methinks. So one swing from Ulbrick and one swing from Alfin. And now, Ulbrick can hit Gideon with an amplified Brand's Thunder. Let's see what kind of mark this leaves. 6,000. Nice. Oh yeah, he's in the red. Let's see, what are you sitting at now, big fella? 2,000. We got this. <laughs> in fact, let's see what kind of damage a maxed out amputation will do. Enough to kill him! Booyah! <laughs> nice going, Alfin. Okay, and two level ups to top it off. All right, that went much better than our first attempt. Oh, and I got and I got his dagger apparently. Okay, well I guess I'll pass that off to either Therion or Primrose. Now then, let's get those people out of here before they meet the same grisly fate as the guy on those boards. Phew, they're still alive after all. All right. Now, what about the young lady? Is she all right? Oh. What do you see there, uh, Cyrus? What's, the What's this? It couldn't be. A copy of From the Far Reaches of Hell? Oh. Well, shit. I guess we found it. Well... That's unfortunate. What's unfortunate? It's but an abridged copy, translated into the modern tongue. 
And aside from basic instructions on performing the rites and the regents required, all of the details have been all but omitted. Okay, so it's not a complete copy. It's just the basics. Why, it doesn't even mention the possible uses of these blood crystals. Real? Then why the heck was this guy... <laughs> then why the heck was this guy freaking kidnapping people to make them? What's this? A piece of parchment has been inserted between the pages. Calculations on the number of test subjects required to create one blood crystal. I see. Do I even want to know the number? And there's a note. First specimen successfully synthesized and delivered. Delivered. Okay, so he was making these for someone else, I guess? Delivered? Could it be that someone commissioned that frightful stone? I can only speculate, but could whoever is behind this be connected to the stolen tome I seek? Possibly. Oh. Hey. Where, where am I? No worries. You're safe. Ah, you're back with us, good miss. Oh. I, I'm feeling... Uh-oh. What's the matter? The drugs that awful man gave you are still affecting you. Pray, rest until your strength returns. Who, who are you? An excellent question, my dear, and one I'd be more than happy to answer. All right, then. We stopped a crazy blood sacrifice. I'd say that's a good day's work. Wooing a poor girl just awakened from a coma? Have you no shame? Oh, boy. Ha ha ha. Don't be silly, Odette. I was merely trying to be a gentleman. Clearly. At any rate, Odette, there is a favor I would ask of you. Another one. Note my complete lack of surprise. I found on our kidnapper's person an abridged translated copy of From the Far Reaches of Hell. What was that? You're kidding. Needless to say, this could be a tremendous lead. I need to find out where and by whom the volume was translated. Let me have a look. Alright, do your thing. Whoever bound this spared no expense. I thought the same. There are few bookmakers in the realm that could produce such a tome. <sighs> Fine, I'll help. You have my thanks. Alrighty. So what information can you give me there, Odette? Oh, okay, I guess that's what they're searching for now. Eureka! Did you find something? The thin yet sturdy pages are characteristic of paper made from the finest pine wood. Really? You derive the location based on the make of the paper? Dang! While the texture of the vivid red binding reveals it is unmistakably tanned lambskin. There is only one place in the realm where both can be found in sufficient quantities. Stone Guard. I am certain of it. So that's where you will travel. Where else? I must track down this tome, Odette. And I must do so before any more horrors can be unleashed upon our fair realm. I wasn't asking, you know. Okay. Well, some travel banter. Let's see it. What's the matter, Alfin? Alfin, my friend, you seem... melancholy. It's nothing. Yet I am worried that it is, in fact, something. Well, I can't stop thinking about them poor folks that got sacrificed. It's an awful thing. People ain't tools to be used. Knowledge is a tool that can serve noble ends, or wicked, depending on who wields it. What matters is the nature of the person who uses the tool, the disposition of their heart. Yours, for example, is full of goodness, and I believe that any knowledge is safe in your hands. Ah, leave off it, Professor. I've got my brain full just trying to learn all I can about medicine. In any case, I feel sick thinking about all this. I need to wash my hands or something. Use this. A handkerchief? Thank you, Professor. Hmm. I believe I shall learn much from this man. You're still here. I am, but not a moment longer. Thank you for everything, Odette. I am in your... debt. <laughs> <laughs> you helped out a little here. What say we call it even? Be safe, Cyrus. I have a hunch you're poking around in something far more sinister than either of us can imagine. 
Yeah, well, we already saw the creation of crystals made from human blood, so yeah, I'm getting a bit of an inkling in that direction as well. I am well aware of the danger. I will exercise due caution. <laughs> due caution? I'll believe it once you quit diving headfirst into whatever you think smells of mystery. A man cannot so easily change his God's given disposition. You said it was 15 years ago that the tome was stolen. That I did. What of it? As you may recall, the then headmaster of the academy died under mysterious circumstances that very same year. Oh. You don't say. Hmm. And you believe the two incidents are connected somehow? No, I just like spouting valedictory trivia. But now that you mention it, the disorder following the incident would offer a convenient opportunity to misappropriate an article from the archives, wouldn't you say? Your insight is invaluable and appreciated. I will keep this in mind. I mean it, Cyrus. Be careful out there. I will. And I'll return as soon as I get to the bottom of this. You have my word. I'll be waiting with bells on. Uh-oh. Hello? Who might you be? Oh, dear. And so Cyrus bid Quarry Crest farewell, the translated volume he recovered from the villain pointing him to his next destination, Stoneguard in the Highlands, where the original copy of the tome he sought surely lies. Cyrus forged on in search of the truth. Okay, then. So yeah, things are getting a bit... Oh, a bit more banter. Okay. Is something troubling you, my friend? You suddenly have a worried look about you. Don't stop and don't look back, but I feel eyes upon us. Someone watching, you mean? Hmm. It would well behoove us to trust your instincts. The question is, who? Let us drag them out of hiding and find out. Compel them to confess their intentions. We could try, but if they escape, we'll only have served to alert them. Then only one other avenue is open to us. What would that be? Continue on our way, pretending that we have noticed nothing, and let them make the first move. If that be your advice, so be it. But you must be our lookout. Do not let your guard slip. Hehe. <laughs> Knowing one's enemy is the first step to defeating him. I cannot tell if you are courageous or ignorant of the danger. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. At least Ulbrich noticed the, noticed the guy as well. But anyway, I think we'll cut the episode here. And in the next part, let's see. Hmm. Okay, well, Chapter 2 of Alfin's Quest is lower level. But uh, from what I can tell, I think we'll be passing straight through Stoneguard to get to it. So I guess we might as well continue Hanit's story next time. So yeah, I guess in the next part, we'll make our way for Stoneguard. So until then, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button down below. My name is Al, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!